Thank you. Yeah. Can I get your autograph? Sure. <laughs> How are you? Good. It's good to good. see you. You too, man. It's been a long time. Well, I'm glad you're driving Pikes Peak, 101st running. Yeah, I know. It's uh, after sitting, talking for eight hours straight with Jared last year with no television coverage whatsoever. Helicopters couldn't get in the air. Um, I had to do anything but that again. Jared's amazing at that. I am i can't talk for eight hours straight, though. I don't know how he does it. So. Uh, Jensen Button and Ant Anstead, they started this company, Radford Motor Cars. It's, it's kind of an old brand from the UK. They revived with a partnership with Lotus. So the road car is actually Lotus chassis, Lotus design, Lotus engine, drivetrain, everything. This, an owner of one of the road cars was like, hey, let's do something crazy and do like a Pikes Peak version. So this one was actually designed by Joe Scarbo, a racer here in the US, who also did you know, some of Ken's cars. And then the drivetrain is Jubu uh, out of Austria, and uh, it's based in a three and a half liter Toyota supercharged car. Basically the motor that was in that generation Camry. Yes, and, exactly. But, but th that was actually in the, what was the Lotus that was, it was based out of, the Evora? No, I don't think it's been, I don't think the Lotus version has come out yet. Oh. And so they gave them the chassis and the drivetrain first and they did kind of like a private label essentially of that chassis and drivetrain as the Radford. Got um, it, okay, so then this one is supercharged. This one's supercharged, yeah, Jubu Racing does like GT4 motors and stuff like that. They do kind of cup series and stuff in the US. Drivetrain, I think it's sea level is somewhere around 700, just over 700, the car, with all the body work and a lot of this has been 3D printed, most of it is all carbon, mm -hmm. but a lot of this is heavier than it necessarily, uh, it will be in its final version. The way it sits with me in it, it'll be probably just under 2,400 pounds, which is still a it's, pretty amazing feat. That's so light yeah. for how, it's actually pretty long too. It's not It's not a tiny car. It's made to be a two, it is a center seat, but it's, it's actually, you'll see from the carbon dash and everything, it's made actually to be a, a, a double seat. But it, I could see all this stuff is 3D printed. Yes. Right? A lot of these aero pieces are 3D printed. Yeah, this is a honeycomb section here. The roof is, unfortunately, this roof scoop is still 3D print. It wasn't carbon yet, so it's quite heavy. Uh -huh. This this whole panel here, you can kind of, it's kind of cool how they did the original body shape and then they stitched on these huge fenders, kind of 80s style, which I love that. That is so cool. Um, but that's all carbon. This whole front nose thing is less than 10 pounds. Incredible. Yeah. And then uh, carbon wheels too? Yeah, the car, I wish I knew more about the carbon wheels. I'm just afraid of chipping them. <laughs> <laughs> but they're uh, they're pretty lightweight. They pretty much determined the size uh, Yokohama tire that we could run, because they're quite a wide wheel. And so we pretty much could just run the the widest thing Yokohama had. And then they chose a center seat. It's a it's, it's pretty tight cramp in there. We're using some prototype lithium batteries from, from Optima, which are very lightweight. You can see uh, that uh, Jensen Button's got his name on it. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure they're gonna let both names stay on it through tech, but Jensen was originally slated to drive the car at Pikes Peak. Personally, I had a feeling he wasn't ever gonna drive it, but luckily for him, uh, Lamar came up and he ran it in the NASCAR, which was an awesome show so to cool. see. It Love was that. So, so badass, cool. wasn't it? And then I think he'll drive it again uh, later on, Goodwood, things like that. But they'll probably take my name off for that. But anyway, it's good to carry Jensen around. But then this is interesting in that it's center seat, Maybe the production version, will that be a two seat yeah. version? Okay. Yeah, so the production version that is similar to this, the Model 62, and I shouldn't be the spokesperson for this car, but I'll still speak to what I know about it. The center seat was just for the Pikes Peak version. The owner of this is one of the buyers of the production car, so he will take ownership of this and use it as a weekend warrior race car. And so he wanted a center seat. The road version is a street legal. It's already for sale. They already have sold a lot of them, um, but it is a two seat setup. Yeah. That is so cool. And this this rear piece, I've never seen anything like this, like the strengthening here for this rear diffuser setup. That is, it's all 3D printed. And to keep it all together, they have this CNC aluminum piece here. Yeah, that's, I don't know much about it. I mean, I know that the colors and and everything when they did add things were pretty particular because they had uh, Chip Foose do the design. Ant and Jensen, their company actually owned the rights to the John Player special 
livery. So this is the first, I'm told, the first John Player race car that's been raced since Senna, which is cool. And they, uh, and I actually, I haven't pulled it out of the bag yet, but I just yesterday got a uh, John Player's helmet made because, I mean, it's how often are you gonna get to drive an iconic livery like this, right? So I'm so unbelievably stoked that that like got together just in like just in time you know helmets aren't very quick right and it's not like an inspiration livery it, it's cool that you're not like driving a tribute vehicle or anything right. this is actually like a licensed legal yeah uh, livery for this vehicle yes yeah it is so <laughs> they've put uh bike speak special on one side john players on the other side what yeah buddy that is so cool. The guy did, he freaking did the Hans devices. He put gold on all the buckles. He did a good job. Incredible. Yeah, no, these guys. What a good kit. looking helmet. Yeah, no, I mean, you only get to drive a JPS livery potentially one time ever. So then you gotta get out. Hopefully box. more. Hopefully yes. you, you get to use that more than one time. Yeah, hopefully <laughs> not in the hard way. Yeah. How's it? To, to actually drive. That's the thing is when you have something go from like a piece of paper to the track in such a short amount of time, it's a little unnerving. Scarbo has done this before, so he knew what was up. So it's pretty predictable. He developed a huge amount of anti-squat, so it actually has a lot of forward grip. He didn't take any anti-dive into it, so you can feel quite a lot of braking, and that's a little bit of getting used to. Um, what I battle with is a little bit of oversteer. Until this wing starts activating above 70, 80, 90 miles an hour, it mechanically has quite a bit of oversteer, which we've done a lot to the suspension to remedy that, but we haven't had enough time in it to really get it to where you can attack a lot of these corners. So how much have you actually driven this? We did uh, two sections last weekend on the mountain, and then just a couple hours at PPIR just to get some altitude testing. Also went out to Willow Springs and did a few laps with Jensen. Um, but with, at Willow, you're at sea level, so the aero takes over so much that it didn't really give us a good chance to get the mechanical side dialed in that much, I think. But it's, uh, yeah, it's, that's just one of the things is when you have a car that's been raced thousands and thousands of miles and had thousands of engineers touch it, it's going to be predictable. My goal for this car is just to make it predictable. So if it's raining or if it's dry or if it's hot or cold or whatever, you can still attack with a certain level of confidence in the car. Now that I see Randy's in the same class with the Plaid, I mean, that car's so ridiculously fast. My main goal was to beat Reese because he's in the class, even though he weighs 1,500 pounds more. Doesn't matter, always, uh, always competitive with Reese no matter what. But um, Randy's gonna be very, very fast, so I would like to put in a good showing. So we're actually in the tech line right now, and this is going to get teched. Um, but luckily we're able to steal hey, a couple hey, minutes worry, of Tanner's time. This thing is so cool. What a presence. It just looks so good. I don't really know how to explain it, but it just looks incredible. The design is so beautiful. It really Have is. you driven anything like this before? No, definitely not here. I've never driven anything this fast on the mountain before. I mean, I drove a very lightweight, high horsepower alcohol burning car when it was gravel, but you know, this thing makes a lot of grip. You have three 20s in the back on just slicks. Right now, these are rain tires, but you saw the slicks sitting next to the car before it. Those Yokohamas make a ton of grip. They're super soft. So yeah, it's it's a lot. And, and believe me, I've been saying to Ant, if I can just make it go half as fast as, like, as it looks, then I'm gonna be happy. And then how did testing go? I think you, uh, this put down some really impressive times for like the limited amount of time that you had on the mountain, huh? Uh, I think some of the times were pretty good. I think I could go faster in both. I'm really sort of grip limited in the rear a lot. And the power being supercharged instead of turbocharged, it actually drops off more with altitude. The supercharger doesn't make up as much of that differential as the turbo does. So it loses a big chunk of power by the time you get to the W's. Jubu has done an amazing job. I mean, there's like 10 radiators. There's, there's coolers everywhere in this car. Probably makes up a lot of its drag is just radiators everywhere. So far, knock on wood, we haven't seen a lot of heat soaking, you know, temperature climbs, but you never get to test the full mountain all at once until race day. And then you learn a lot. 
And then, so you, the last time you actually drove the whole way, and it, it was still a lot of gravel, or it was mostly gravel. The last time I raced on this mountain from bottom to the very top, it was still mostly gravel. Because uh, the first time I did it paved was with the Porsche Cup class. And while we practiced all of the sections, quite a lot on race day the fog moved in and the top of the mountain had snow on it and it was just to devil's playground which is about three quarters of the way up and this is just way faster than those gt4s this is much faster than the gt4s it's much lighter amazingly enough and uh, then you know more than 200 horsepower more I would say. Plus, we're running on slicks instead of a, a street tire that the there's like a spec Yoko that the GT4s run on. So if I get beat by a GT4, I'm just going to jump off the backside of the mountain. But the uh, <laughs> with this mountain, you just never know, right? Yeah. And so, um, really hoping. I mean, this week right now, I just literally flew over the mountain about an hour and a half ago, and there's still like five, six feet of snow. They've done an amazing job plowing. But you know, where that snow melts and drains and freezes overnight, they can cancel that top section if that ice doesn't soften up by the time the race starts. So uh, I love never... that that's your way of scouting. You just <laughs> kind of do some circles around the top. Yeah, I did, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I looked in there and you know, big thumbs up to the scout, to the uh, snowplow guys. I know they've been cranking on it yeah. nonstop, but every morning there's runoff that's frozen. So that's what you're dealing with. Well, it's good to see you. So stoked to see you in this. Can't wait to see you fly by us at whatever corner we're going to be at on the Good mountain. Good to see you, so, Larry. No, yeah. it's, uh, it's going to be awesome. Awesome. Thanks a lot, brother. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to support us directly, go to LarryChenPrints.com. I print and sign every single one of these. This is the perfect gift or it's the perfect piece of art for your wall.